my name is amandeep singh i am joining you all via facebook live of pyramidy services official facebook page uh thank you so much for joining us and to all the viewers uh, who are you know slowly and steadily joining us i welcome you for this special session today again as you all know that uh, pyramidy services has started a new exercise in the month of august that is bringing our top business partners from different countries on our facebook page and you know listening to their viewpoint unke viewpoint ko sunna and unse understand karna ke how the things are at the university or the country which they represent so that right information right amount of information can be provided to the students and the parents who are willing to send their child or as a student who are willing to study in at, at their dream country and their dream campus so usi kadi ko us usse kadi nu asi jodde hue you know i am uh, honored to have uh, another special guest from quantum polytech university canada with us i am very very honored to welcome you chirag veer teja ji chirag hello how are you how are you doing i'm good amadeep thank you for having me we've done quite a few events with pyramid e services in the past i'm i'm thank you for this opportunity i'm very glad to be here to talking to you and um hopefully sharing some valuable information for the students Absolutely thank you so much Chirag so uh, Chirag I'll just start off by you know there must be few recent pass of students who would really like to know about the university so uh, it would be great if you can talk uh, you know in brief about the the university history if you can share a bit about the USPs of the university and the location uh, locations where the university is all over to you Chirag Absolutely Absolutely thank you Amandeep so uh, KPU is a public university we have been uh, well we we started operation in 1981 so we were a fairly young university we initially were a college and then we became a public accredited university in 2008 and then um, ever since then we have been offering bachelor's degrees post baccalaureate diplomas as well as graduate uh, programs so we we have over 135 different programs to offer students so anywhere from faculty of arts to business to health to design science and horticulture and trades and technology so basically if uh, if you're looking for a pro- if a student is looking for a program there's a good chance we already have it and one of the things that really sets us apart and something that we pride ourselves on is that we are hands on university so we really focus on practical learning skills that students develop in the classroom and outside the classroom and we've over the years we've seen that those students who have those skills and as long as we can nurture them they do really well when they go out in the workplace and it's much easier for them to find jobs as well because they can apply those practical skills to jobs um to real life jobs which is what employers are looking for and that's one of the things that KPU sort of uh, focuses very very extensively on even in the age of pandemic we are really hoping to have that practical experience um in the classroom so our classroom sizes are no more than 35 students which really helps to a for us to deliver that hands on experience and b for the student to be able to know their classmates and also be free to talk up to the instructors because we understand that if you're an international student in a foreign country and sitting in a classroom of 200 students it's very very hard for you to speak up and ask questions so that 35 students in the classroom a uh, real concept really works well for those students so mm-hmm. that, that's one of the th- really key things that uh, distinguishes KPU from from other institutions perfect could can you can you share the the the, the locations as well where where are the campuses located uh, uh, for for KPU Absolutely great question. So we are in Metro Vancouver uh, in the province in the beautiful province of British Columbia. So we're in the west coast. Uh, we are roughly 6 hours away from Toronto, which is another popular destination as you know uh, by uh, by flight. So we're pretty uh, pretty far away. but yeah we are in uh, in metro vancouver and we've got five campuses that are spread across the suburban areas that surround vancouver and one of the key advantages is is the housing cost is much less when you live in the suburban areas as compared to living in uh, downtown vancouver which is one of the most expensive places on this planet to live because it's so beautiful 
yeah yeah perfect thank you so much for uh, sharing the locations i hope you you know uh, understand are are absolutely aware that this is one of the prime aspect that the students also consider that where are the campus locations yeah. and uh, totally. you know moving further to that uh, chirag it would be great if you can uh, tell us our tell our viewers a bit about the programs uh, available at the at the university as well and also the you know admissions criteria the the academic and the the ielts requirement uh, the language proficiency for those programs totally so we we've got over 135 different programs so we have a bunch of programs in our faculty of arts that's our largest faculty um and then we have programs in business in design so uh, kpu has the best last year was awarded as the best overall design school in all of canada and um for our school of business our our employment rate for graduates is at 94% which is pretty staggering in addition to that we also offer programs in sciences in horticulture so horticulture includes programs like uh, agriculture sustainable agriculture because that's one of the th key things moving forward as people are looking towards more sustainable form of our agriculture and also doing it in an urban setting because the land mass is is decreasing as globalization and development really increases uh in addition to that we also have trades and health um uh, faculties and a bunch of programs under them the the admissions criteria for our indian students is that we uh, we need them to meet our ielts requirements so ielts is 6.5 with nothing less than 6 in each of the four modules we also accept duolingo in the age of covid um and students need to have 110 score overall in order to meet that requirement another popular test that we've been seeing a lot of our indian students take is the pte which we also accept for admission purposes and uh, with a score of 61 or more for the high school requirement for um, for cbsc isc we require students to have we recommend students to have 65% or more and if they did their education from a state board then we recommend them to have more than 70%. Now it's it's a recommended um if you have lower than that you can still apply but your chances of getting admission are less because the preference is given to students who have a higher academic score. So if you have more than the recommended your chances of getting admission are very very high. And then we of course we have post baccalaureate diplomas and stuff and um for for that students would need to need to um, provide a copy of their bachelor's. And and in the age of covid we are accepting all documents by 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 scan scanning so they don't need to, we don't require students to mail any documents to us uh, it all can be scanned and we can provide a conditional letter of acceptance perfect that's great so the the last point is pretty valuable that you know the documents can be mailed and uh, based on that the process can be continued so uh, jirag uh, that's that's absolutely fair to you know share uh, about the program uh, to all the viewers who are watching guys uh, it's a little difficult sometimes to explain all the details in the limited time so if you have any any question further to about the programs and the admissions criteria you can contact pyramidy services on the number shared below or you can visit our offices as well we are making sure that all the social distancing norms are followed as per the central and state government under the guidelines given for the lockdown as well so apart from saturday and sunday you can visit our specific offices uh, which are which are open on the weekdays uh, moving ahead chirag uh, also to know about you know the the, the fee structure specifically in this time uh, that's that's one of the very first thing apart from, normally also but th these days it's it's it is becoming more prominent so if you can talk about the fee structure and also the scholarship opportunities available for the students absolutely and and you are totally right that's that's one of the key questions that i get all the time from students so one of the things that we pride us ourselves on is that even though kpu is a university students pay tuition that's very competitive to that of colleges um and 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 they still end up getting university level education and have access to greater number of programs than they would at at a college 
So our tuition for an average two-year diploma would be approximately around thirty-eight to forty thousand Canadian dollars to be paid over the two years. Now, one of the things is, as a university, students pay as they go. So what I mean by that is that we don't have a fixed fee system where you need to pay a fixed amount every semester. If you decide to take less courses in a specific semester, then you pay less tuition. And if you decide to take more, you pay more accordingly. So it really depends on the number of credits that you're taking in a course. Again, it, it gets a bit confusing, but credits is the measuring unit of a course, essentially. So typically one undergraduate course at KPU would be three credits. Um, and then in order to graduate, you need to accumulate enough credits um, in order to, uh, you know, satisfy the requirements of obtaining a credential at the end of your education. So Overall, our tuition is very is fairly affordable, which is something that we hear very consistently across all students. And our tuition increases that happen are, are never out of the blue and so substantial that students just uh, their budget goes, uh, you know, is thrown out of the um, out of the out of the window. That's one of the key things that we focus on to make sure that our education is quality is, is high quality and also affordable to students. In terms of the scholarship, at this point in time, we're not offering any entrance scholarship. So there are a few um, typical scholarships that are offered from the president's office based on the credential of a student. So if you're academically strong, if you have volunteered in your community and a bunch of other things, which typically are international students are not able to meet. Um, however, once you do become a, um, a KPU student, you our students do have access to over $2 million of, of annual donor funded scholarships. Now, of course, students can't apply for the entire 2 million, but they, but they can, most of the scholarships range in, in between $200 and they can go as high as 25 to $3,000 as well. And they can apply for multiple scholarships as long as they meet the criteria under them. So yeah, one of the advice that I wanna to give to students, even if they don't come to KPU or whichever institute they decide to go to is to volunteer. So when students volunteer, when they, when they come to Canada, when they volunteer on campus or off campus, that really not only helps them build up their resume, which is essential to getting a job in Canada, but it also builds up the, the confidence. It, it helps to give access to different kind of resources and things that they normally would not have. And at the end of the day, those are key things that, um, that um, the scholarships have in their criteria. So again, all the students, most of the students want to just find work as they, uh, right when they um, start their education, which makes sense. It, the education is expensive, but I really recommend most of our students to take the time to volunteer, at least in, in the four to six months that they're here, because that really helps to, not only to build their personal confidence, but, but to also give them um, the opportunity to be able to apply to those scholarships, which is gonna pay them in the long term. So that's a, that's a, that's a bit of an initial inconvenience for a greater gain over the long, long term. Very, very well said, Chirag. You know, uh, long term, you know, the way it's going to help out students is 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 absolutely going to be great. So, uh, you know, we, you you have shared about the programs, you have shared about the fee structure, admission admissions criteria, and also certain USPs which a student is pretty interested to know about. But you know, these days the the elephant in the room is always going to be the coronavirus and how it's going to change the whole ideology or the process structure for any university or an agency you know in across the globe so what changes you know uh, should the students be aware of that the university has brought in for them which are you know beneficial for them or they should know know about so could you talk a bit about that Sure, absolutely, and you, you're totally right. Elephant in the room is the exact uh, typical, uh, proper phrase to use in this situation because it is on everyone's mind and fairly so. So one of the things that came, of course, like all universities and colleges, we have moved our education online for the fall semester, which is the September intake. And 
uh, one of the things we recently ran a survey for students who international and domestic who took education um, online and we got overwhelmingly positive responses and to my surprise I thought most of the students are gonna uh, are just gonna go all out for how they did not like it but we're very glad to hear that most students liked it and and um, we, we are trying to make most of the content asynchronous which which means that students um, is especially if they are in, in India where the time difference is so humongous they, they don't end up waking up in the middle of the night to attend the lecture they can uh, they can watch at their own convenience and participate in the discussion forums that the instructors create for them so that, that's one of the ways that we have been able to ensure that we a provide hands-on education we give them access give students access to as many resources as possible and to make their their education still worthwhile and and we're glad to say that at least from the responses we got in the last intake in the may intake things are are it, it, this is something that students have appreciated and we're very confident it's going to happen in the same thing is going to happen in the September intake as well. Now in regards with regards to what students need to know moving forward we have been open to helping students with support letters if they're interested in coming to Canada. Now the border officers have of course that they are the ones who make the final decision so uh, while we can provide the support letter we cannot ensure that the students will eventually be able to enter canada uh, simply because there are various things that the border officers look at which the university just just cannot uh, like comprehend, uh, comprehend essentially so we have brought it down to a few reasons that we believe will help the students um, get in and it's a legitimate reason for them to come in Canada and study rather than studying uh, in India. And one of those is that if they don't have access to internet connection, now that reasoning it has worked for a few students, it hasn't worked for many. So again, my recommendation would always be if you're able to take the courses online reasonably and all your courses are offered online, it's the it's a safer bet to take them online and the reason i say this is there's too much money too much hassle involved in uh, buying a plane ticket in you know of course even psych psychologically when you're preparing yourself to go to a new country you're you're almost uh, you're very you're almost euphoric that you're going to land there you're going to quarantine you get to see the you know the new environment and i totally get that but when it gets shattered, uh, when you go to the airport and you get sent back, I think psychologically they can have really detrimental impact on a student's confidence and, and also the time and money that you end up spending, which all goes down the drain. So again, if you are able to buy a better internet connection to make the speed much faster, just for the four months to make sure that you take the courses online, it, you should because th there's just too much risk involved at times um, to, to, you know, to going, um, to coming, to going through the, this entire process and the, the border officer having um, made the decision to send you back. So, so yeah, so that's my first suggestion. Now, of course, if there are certain courses that do require you to come to Canada, that's a totally different thing. In that case, I don't think anyone has been refused, uh, to my knowledge. But of course, if you if the courses are offered online, you don't really have any challenges facing you. I know it's a very hard thing to. It's easier for me to say, but it's hard for you to listen. But you should uh, consider taking those courses online and just riding out this uncertain wave and then once things do clear out which i promise they will you you uh, you know you will end up coming to this beautiful country and and getting the education that we so want you to have our goal is to make the hands-on education online but at the same time the the education that you get in class is is always going to be is always going to trump the education that you get online and we understand that so we're making everything um we're doing everything to make that possible but you just have to wait a little longer before things um, things really clear out and get much better 
Right, sir. Uh, great advice given, and you know the way you have uh, given the input on the, the 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 concept of psychological effect is also helpful, and you know we also believe the same. Uh, but if a student, you know, uh, gets applies for his application for September, or you know, most of them have already applied, gets the the AIP, starts yeah. his education or her education in India, there's a second uh, important question in their mind is that is the refund policy. right mm. we are very confident that if a student you know gets the aip specifically from for, for kpu the the stage 2 is also going to be in acceptance but let's be practical and god forbid if there is a situation where there's a stage 2 refusal for a student so what would be the refund policy uh, at kpu teja absolutely that's a great question so at this point in time our our refund policy remains pretty standard which is that if a student is registered on the first day of classes they can certainly take courses there's no problem even if they have even if they don't have an aip they can still register in courses and take the um, take the semester as usual because excuse me we're not really checking students for study permit that we normally would now if they end up getting a de- a denial during the semester and they're registered in courses then um, unfortunately kpu will not be refunding the tuition um, for the registered courses and the reason is simple there are limited seats uh, because we have a 35 student in 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 a semester uh, sorry in a class concept that does mean that there are students who are on the wait list that don't end up getting the class so if a student gets a, de- a denial uh, in the middle of a semester and they have to drop the courses all of a sudden that seat goes unfilled and um you know we end up being in a predicament so at this point in time we are not um even with the financial impact that the university has taken we're not able to refund uh, tuition for students who are registered in courses but end up getting a de- denial um however our standard policy is if you're registered if you're not registered in any courses we will give you full refund we don't withhold any money so my suggestion would be if you don't get the visa um confirmation by 7th of september for the students starting in fall then we recommend that you drop all the courses if you don't get the stage 2 approval drop all the courses and then consider deferring to the next intake again i know that's a, another excruciating 4 months that you have to wait but as far as i'm concerned it's much better to be safe than sorry so unless you are super confident that you will be able to uh, get the stage to approval i i wouldn't recommend um moving forward with the classes because you don't you won't be able to get a refund at the end of it right uh thank you teja for giving that update and i hope uh, all the viewers and the parents uh, you know students and the parents who are watching us uh, have heard that point clearly so kpu's policy is very straightforward if you register for the courses the course is registered fee would not be refunded and if in case you are worried that you know if you are uh, uh, aip the stage 1 approval doesn't come by september 7th right teja that's right so if the, if the stage 1 approval doesn't come by september 7th the university suggest deferral for the next intake right yeah correct perfect thank you for being so straight forward and honest teja i'm sure this is going to help the viewers to understand about their application at kpu so uh i would not be taking more time because i know it's pretty late over there for you so uh, you know I again thank you for joining us for this session and providing this important information about the university and how the university is supporting the students during this pandemic and uh, to all the viewers who are watching us if you have any question about the university you want to know more about the programs and and the eligibility based on your application you can contact pyramid e services on the number shared below or you can visit us at the nearby offices as well please make sure when you are visiting us you are wearing a mask as well as we are also following that same protocol right now you don't see me wearing a mask because i am in a room all alone but else i am wearing this mask all the time in the office whenever i go 
so this is very important to ensure that you follow this protocol and uh, on that note uh, i would i would thank all the viewers who are watching us and thank you chiragveer teja ji once again for joining us for this facebook live and uh, providing this valuable information to us thank you so much chirag Thank you, Amalid. I really appreciate your time, and thank you to the viewers as well who've uh, who've taken the time to go through this um, this this little interview that we did. But I really appreciate uh, taking out the time from your busy day and and um, you know coming up with this opportunity. I'm, I'm very glad to be able to share information. Thank you. Pleasure is all ours. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Take care, Amalid. Stay safe. You too. Take care. Pyramid Visa for a better life.